Does driving over the curbs in a racetrack make you faster? Let's find out. Curbs have been included in hundreds of racetracks across the world for a long time. Their original purpose was to prevent dirt and gravel from being brought onto the road surface whenever drivers have a wheel move off the track when taking corners. Since many racetracks have replaced their grass and gravel runoffs with tarmac, this is no longer their main purpose. Now they mainly act as a safety feature by slowing down the cars. The rib design also creates a sound when driven over. Our racetrack of choice for this experiment is the Red Bull Ring. Sitting at 4.3 kilometers long, this track is one of the shortest on the Formula 1 calendar. I'm not a perfect driver, so a short track like this is great because there are few opportunities to make mistakes. This track is also very easy to drive, with the only problematic corner for me being turn 6. So now we begin with a lap where we're not going to use the curbs. Keeping it pretty clean through the final two corners, getting a bit loose through the final corner, DRS on, and we begin our lap. So even though the curbs have lost their purpose by not being driven over, they are still incredibly useful as braking markers. As we take turn one very cleanly, I'm pretty happy with what we've done there. Heading through the left-hander of turn two and into the heavy braking zone of turn three. Due to the low traction through this corner, it's actually advised to not use the curbs because they don't make you faster. Now heading through the second DRS straight, or third actually, you come into the heavy braking zone of turn 4, keeping it pretty clean using the full width of the track, into turn 6, which is my worst corner, I thankfully take it pretty cleanly. Now into turn 7 and 8, keeping it pretty clean through these two corners, and now into the next difficult corner, which is turn 9, getting close to the curbs, slightly missing the apex, but thankfully that shouldn't have too big of an effect. As we now come through the final corner, DRS on, and across the finish line, we finish with a 1 minute 5.27. Not all curbs are made the same. They come in different shapes and sizes, and therefore have different effects on the car. We've got flat curbs like the ones found around the Sochi Autodrome, which can be driven over with no problems. There are raised curbs on some corner of the spa, and the Hungara ring which will unsettle the car and cause you to spin. And the final curb is the most dangerous curb in existence. It can literally break your back. It's called the sausage curb. Their sole purpose is to heavily discourage you from extending track limits in order to gain a lap time advantage. They're almost always yellow. Running over the curb will make your car slide over it like a skateboard or worse, it will launch your car into the air. So let's go over the curbs around the Red Bull Ring. The track has mostly got flat curbs along with non-lethal sausage curbs. The apex curbs are slightly raised and can spin you if hit at the wrong angle. The most dangerous curbs is the one on the entry of turn nine. If you're brave, you can try to use it, but I'm not sure if it's gonna make you any faster. Now let's run a lap while using the curbs to try to carry more speed throughout the corner. And now we begin what is basically a normal lap. Already taking advantage of the curbs, but unfortunately we run wide and get our lap invalidated. Despite being close to the final corner, that lap that still does not invalidate this current lap, surprisingly. So you can see us getting the left hand side wheels onto the green stuff and making sure to take advantage of every single curb throughout the corner, the entry, the apex, and the exit. Now coming into turn three, braking really heavily, but we're not gonna use the curbs here. Because of the low traction through this corner, it's just not gonna help. Heading through the next DRS straight, into the downhill of turn four, getting close to the outside curb, but then touching the inside and the exit curb, which gives us a bit of extra time. Now heading through turn six, using that entrance curb to give us a bit more speed into the entry of the corner, which is gonna give us more lap time. As we head through turn eight, taking full advantage of that curb, and now into turn nine, the difficult one, just lightly touching it, bringing the car in, and thankfully not missing the apex, but we did run wide and were somehow not invalidated. As we head through the final corner and cross the line, we've finished with a pretty good lap. 
So to compare the sectors, sector 1, 2 tenths up, sector 2, 3 tenths up, and then sector 3 are the entire 7 tenths up. So what's the lesson? If you're not using the full width of the track, then what the are you doing?